In this study, we will learn that God destroyed Gog, who represents Satan, and his weapons of war so that the gospel could go into the world to save God's elect after the Great Tribulation. During our last study, we learned from Revelation chapter 20, verse 7, that God loosed Satan out of his prison, and then he came against the camp of the saints. And God typifies Satan as Gog and Magog. There we read, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So there's no question here that Gog and Magog are identified with Satan as he comes against the elect in the church during the Great Tribulation. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 13 and Daniel chapter 7 that Satan came to make war with the saints. And during that war, Satan came to deceive the nations by teaching them to follow after false miracles and works gospels, which teach that we can become saved by our own works, such as accepting Jesus or being baptized in water to become saved. And so, we are living in a time when many churches in the world come under God's judgment because they reject the true gospel. And so when we go to Ezekiel chapter 39, God explains how he's going to destroy Gog and Magog along with her false prophets, Meshach and Tubal. So in Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 1, we read that Gog was the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And then skipping down to verse 6, we read about the fire that's going to come on Magog. And this fire reminds us of what we just learned in Revelation chapter 20, where God says he would bring fire down from heaven to destroy Gog and Magog. So in verse 6 of Ezekiel chapter 39, we read, I will send the fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name any more. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. So we see that the purpose of destroying Gog and Magog is so that God's holy name will no longer be polluted. And in the context of Ezekiel chapter 37 and 39, we find that the land was polluted because Israel began to worship idols. And we know from Revelation chapter 9 verse 20 that idol worship is identified with the worship of Satan and the worship of our own hands, which means we are following gospels that teach we can do something to save ourselves. As I've said many times, they teach we can accept Jesus because he died for the sins of the whole world. And so all we have to do is accept him, get water baptized, and we're saved. But all of these ideas are anathema to the true gospel, and they have polluted the church. And therefore, God brought judgment on Gog and Magog and her prophets Meshach and Tubal, who were responsible for teaching false doctrines in the church. And in this capacity, God says in verse 9 of Ezekiel chapter 39 that he's going to destroy the weapons of Meshach and Tubal. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows and the hand staffs and the spears. And they shall burn them with fire seven years. Now, we know from Ezekiel chapter 32, verse 26, that Meshach and Tubal used their weapons of war to bring terror in the land of the living. And as a result, we read that they were brought down to hell with their weapons of war. 
So let's turn to Ezekiel chapter 32, verse 26. There is Meshach and Tubal, and all of her multitude, her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they caused terror in the land of the living. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war. They shall lay their swords under their heads, but their iniquities shall be upon their bones, though they were the terror of the mighty in the land of the living. And so we see here that the final resting place of Meshach and Tubal and her weapons of war will be hell. And that's precisely why Revelation chapter 20 Verse 10 says that when fire comes down from heaven to destroy Gog and Magog, that the beast and the false prophet were cast in the lake of fire and hell. Okay, so since we learned in Ezekiel chapter 32 that the weapons of war that Meshach and Tubal came with to cause iniquity and terror in the land, that they're also going to be put into hell. So it's important for us to understand what the meaning of these weapons represent. And we find when we go to verses like Isaiah chapter 54, that the weapons are identified with the tongue of false prophets. There we read, No weapons that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Moreover, in Psalm chapter 59, verse 7, we read that the mouth of false prophets are identified with swords. Behold, they belch out their words. Swords are in their lips, for who they say doth hear. And so, when we think about the mouth as a weapon, we can begin to understand why Revelation chapter 16 says that the mouth of the dragon and the mouth of the beast and the mouth of the false prophet are the spirits of devils going forth to deceive the world with miracles. And so, during the Great Tribulation, we see that all or many of the churches are going to be filled with false prophets. As Matthew chapter 24 says, these false prophets are going to come with signs and wonders. And if possible, they could deceive the very elect. In this regard, Revelation chapter 13 asks the question, who can make war with the beast? And the reason this beast is able to make war is because he comes to the church with miracles to deceive them to make them believe that speaking in tongues, being slain in the spirit, are evidence of salvation. And so when the true believers go into these churches, they're going to be killed because they refuse to worship the beast and his image. They refuse to speak in tongues. And they have absolutely no interest in receiving dreams and visions. Because they know that Satan comes as an angel of light and his ministers come as ministers of righteousness. That's how Meshach and Tubal will yield their weapons against God's elect when they come past the camp of the saints. But when God comes to bring judgment on Satan and his ministers, it's like he fell from heaven, as we read in Luke chapter 11. Let's turn there, because in this context, God is also speaking or alluding to these weapons. In verse 20 of Luke 11, we read, But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him and taketh him from all his armor, that is those weapons we're talking about in Ezekiel chapter 39, wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils. So here God is explaining to us why he is burning the armor or the weapons of Satan. 
He's burning those weapons for the purpose of freeing his elect from the captivity of Satan. And also so that he might heal them of their sin sicknesses. This is why the context is speaking of the fact that Jesus came to heal people and to free them from demon worship, that is devil worship. That's the sort of activity that is going on in the church, as we learned in Revelation chapter 9, verse 20. And so, when we think about the destruction of Satan the Antichrist, we know from Luke 11 and Matthew chapter 12, that it's actually referring to the fact that Satan was bound and placed back in the bottomless pit so that he could no longer frustrate God's program to evangelize the world. Moreover, his weapons of war were destroyed to teach us that Satan's false prophets would no longer be able to hamper the elect as they go forth into the world with the gospel. Okay, so now we have one final point to make regarding the seven years in which the weapons of war were being burned. When we consider the seven years in relation to armies coming against Jerusalem, the camp of the saints, we know that it might have something to do with the Feast of Tabernacles, which was observed every seven years. For instance, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 10, we read, And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, when we skip up to verse 4 of Deuteronomy chapter 31, we see that Israel was able to keep the Feast of Tabernacles because God destroyed kings Shion and Og, who also represent Satan. And after Israel destroyed them, they took the spoils of war. They took the cattle, which can represent true believers. They took the cities where true believers might be found. And so when we go to Ezekiel chapter 39 and we read that the weapons were destroyed, but the spoil was taken, we know that that can refer to the true believers. And this harkens back to Luke chapter 11, where we learned that the strong man was bound and his armor was taken so that God could spoil Satan's house. So when we think about the woman who was bound by Satan for 18 years, and then she was released from devils by Christ, we know that this Christian woman was a spoil. She was a spoil of war that could not be released until God took away Satan's armor. That is, he subdued Meshach and Tubal and cast them into hell, even as God had to subdue Satan the Antichrist in order to spoil the church where Satan ruled and set them free so that God could save them as the gospel goes into the world. But God is also warning us that if anyone tries to interfere with the gospel going into the world to save his elect, fire comes down from heaven and destroys them. Such as was the case in the days of Elijah, when God destroyed a hundred of Ahaziah's men. Ahaziah being a worshiper of Beelzebub, who represents Satan. But that last 50 that came to Elijah cried to God for mercy, and they were spared. So too, if you're in a church where we know that Satan is ruling, and you're involved in works gospels, and you're involved in speaking in tongues and falling backwards, you too can cry to God for mercy. Ask God to help you to see the abomination of desolation so that you can cleanse your temple, 
by praying that God would give you a new heart and a new spirit so that you can keep God's commandments. Moreover, you must approach God as did the publican who recognized that he was a sinner and he cried to God for mercy.